Bonjour tout le monde. Hi everybody. We are now, it's not the podcast, it's actually a video cast and it's a very special one because today I have with me the clerk of the Privy Council office, Janice Charette. So it's Jean-François Tremblay, your deputy minister, and we will do uh, an interview that will follow some themes. It's also going to go from Français, Anglais, Anglais, Français. Uh, a lot of that will be uh, actually more kind of a cappella, as we say in <laughs> French. And, uh, and uh, first of all, Janice, welcome. Mm, merci beaucoup, Jean-François. I am, uh, I'm happy to be back. You're back. That's <laughs> true. It's the first time I think I have been in this building since I left as the deputy. I remember coming here to see you and walking to my office every day, seeing your pictures now on the wall <laughs> and say she's watching me. <laughs> Over your shoulder, I yeah, think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, Janice, how are you doing? You I'm, make a huge announcement recently. I did. I did. Um, how am I feeling? Uh, a little bit relieved, I would say, uh, but also sad. Hmm. Sad. I can look back and, and be really proud of having... Had a career in the public service. I started in 1984. That's a long time ago. 1984 in the Department of Finance as a term employee. Oh, you still at finance? Mm -hmm. huh. Yes, and within a year I was reorganized. My division was disbanded and I got moved to another section without any consultation. And that's basically kind of how hmm. I expected government would work all the time. So, How long do we know each other? I was wondering that. Do you remember the first time we met? I, I can't remember whether we met in the intergovernmental world or whether it was at health? What uh, do you think? I think I was at social. At social? Yeah. Oh. Working on the cabinet committee with Malcolm Brown. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. You were, I think you were the assistant secretary. Oh, assistant secretary at PNP. PNP. Oh, yes. yes. Okay. And you were working on the speech on the throne. Yes. And I had to go to meetings where you were asking everybody, what's up for you? What's up for you? What's coming? Yeah. What Should a great opportunity we had to be partners together Exactly, then. exactly. And I think I had something like five seconds to tell you what was our, <laughs> our, our views on our side. So that's, that's probably, what, 20 years ago. Oh, my God. I've been a, yeah, yeah. more 20 than 20. 20, 20 yeah. 20 2000 and, yeah. Yeah, 20. 2001, 2002, oui, I would say. Oui. Yeah. oui, dans le troisième mandat de Jean Chrétien. Yeah. Oof. But, you know, that's a great story, actually, Jean-Francois. And for me, as I said to you, relieved because, you know, this is a big job. And so the chance to uh, do something a little different uh, with my life will be welcome and a welcome change to spend more time with my family and my friends and maybe sleep a bit more. But also I look back at the things that I've had a chance to do in my career, work on speeches from the throne, work on health agreements, yeah, which we agreements, also did together, work, together. Yeah. Uh, work on more budgets than I can count, um, transitions. support transitions of government, so many memorandum to cabinet and treasury board submissions. But it's, you know, so I remember those things, but not for the, not for the files, but for the people you had a chance to work with. That's interesting. Remarkable. I also remember my time here. When I needed a bolt of energy, this is my advice to you, Jean-François, when I needed a bolt of energy, because sometimes, you know, Ottawa can be uh, la, la, la région de la capitale nationale, je dois dire. Mm -hmm. um, le travail peut être dur, et les, ouais. les journées sont longues, mais une journée va arriver, vous aurez besoin peut-être d'un peu d'énergie, allez dans la région. Mm. Allez voir les gens qui travaillent face à face avec les Canadiens. Ouais. See those folks working in you know, the EI call centers or in the Service Canada centers who are interfacing with seniors who are getting challenges with their pensions or newcomers to Canada who are trying to get social insurance numbers. Like all of those programs and seeing real live public servants dealing with real live Canadians, it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing fait, what public servants difference. do. Moi, je veux dire, on a, Ian, ton prédécesseur, m'a envoyé à Ressources naturelles pendant la pandémie. Ah oui. Et c'est vrai, hein? vrai qu'un ministère, pendant plus d'un an, sans avoir la chance d'aller voir les partenaires, les régions, et de tout faire de façon virtuelle, c'est très difficile de trouver toutes les motivations qu'on a normalement. I agree with you. I mean, for having work also on Indigenous issues, going in the communities end up being the big value, and seeing the staff on the ground working and doing, making a difference, basically. 
I think it was also hard for our teams, right? Like it was hard for us to be motivated. Can you imagine? It was just, when you think about that as, you know, it's hard to think about a pandemic and that as a goal, as a career highlight. Yeah. Mais le travail que les fonctionnaires ont fait pendant cette pandémie pour livrer les marchandises vraiment pour les Canadiens, pour les appuyer pendant une période qu'ils ont, ils avaient besoin le, l'appui de la fonction publique, oui. c'était merveilleux. Oui. Surtout dans ce ministère, c'est quelque chose qui a été très marquant euh, ah, quand oui. on pense à tous les bénéfices durant la, la pandémie. So it's very exceptional, actually. Yep. We'll go with the themes. The first theme is the workplace. Mm. People want to hear from... Actually, no, I think I'm going even too fast. Maybe I am. No, it's actually the, the workplace. Okay. No, milieu de travail is au sein. Healthy workplace. Healthy workplace. Yeah. How do you keep a healthy workplace, Janice? Your advice. Okay. Um, I'd say, first of all, actually articulating that that is a leadership and a management priority to have a healthy, respectful workplace where people can feel like they can bring their whole selves to work and feel supported and be able to make a real accomplishment. Just saying that and stating that as a goal, Mm. I think is a really important starting point. Having the supports for individuals in place for when they do struggle, whether it's physical or mental health challenges, I think we made a huge amount of progress in that, right? Because... You know, over the years that we've both been leaders in the public service, there was there was a long time where people didn't talk about mental health. There was Devin, stigma. You saw a difference. Oh, we, when you think about 20 years, 30 years ago, huge difference, right? Yeah. People are now. It's still a difficult topic to yeah. talk about, talk about for a lot of people, but I think there is more openness and there's more supports. But there's supports at the individual level. So to have a healthy and respectful workplace, I want to focus on the healthy part because that was your question. I think we have to think about organizational wellness. Pas seulement la question de mon bien-être, ma bien-être. Mon bien-être. Mon bien-être, yeah. ou le vôtre. C'est une question de le bien-être de nos organisations. D'avoir une, une uh, capacité de discuter ouvertement la question de faire d'eau de travail, mm. les heures de travail, les, la gestion des crises, la gestion de la pression. Um, I think we're in a, a world where... Unfortunately, um, we seem to be having one kind of urgency and one kind of crisis after another. And that's not, um, that's not a political statement. That's a statement about the world that we're living in. Most, I think, complex and complicated governing environment we've been in in some time and extraordinary volatility. And so if that's the world we're going to be in, then we need to have a conversation about whether or not we're set up well mm. to deal with that or we just try and do crises on top of everything else. Um, I think we should have a conversation about how we do our work. You know, we're still using, in a lot of cases, quite analog methods here. I sit in ESDC talking about this. Yep. And our goal, our shared goal, is really to be able to connect with citizens and provide them services in a way that's, you know, keeping up with their the way they interact with so many others in a, in a digital space. And finally, I would say we sometimes make our jobs difficult for ourselves. Hmm. Um, and so one of the things we demonstrate during crises like pandemic is, wow, we can be agile. We can be yeah. flexible. We can move quickly. And then the crisis is over and we go back to peacetime. And oh, my goodness, we add layers and layers and layers of bureaucracy that maybe don't add value for citizens. So how do we have those conversations openly pour que les gens puissent être uh, confortables de parler de leurs inquiétudes? de travailler sur les solutions en équipe. Ce n'est pas quelque chose qu'un leader peut régler tout, uh, toute seule, ni un gestionnaire, ni un supervisor, ni un employé. C'est vraiment des choses qu'on doit discuter en équipe au niveau organisationnel, à mon avis. Comment, comment tu gères ces... Parce que tu disais, il y a, on gère beaucoup de crises. Euh, le climat de gouvernance est quand même plus complexe qu'il l'était quand on, quand on a commencé nos carrières. Do you have tricks on... Uh, Comment euh, rendre le climat positif avec les employés quand tu es en situation de crise? Est-ce qu'il y a des... I have seen you, so I, I know how you can be in those, in those situations, but how... But what are you saying, Jean-François? No, I mean, <laughs> no, I'm saying positively. I mean, you always find the good words and the nice words to say to people when, it's, when, when things are rough. Uh, I remember that when we worked together at Health, tu as toujours réussi à... À, à donner la confiance aux gens. Mais j'aimerais t'entendre là-dessus parce que c'est, 
c'est quelque chose qui est important. Puis dans la, les positions que tu as occupées, qui ont été des positions très stressantes, euh, il y a toujours un risque que nos équipes deviennent encore plus stressées que nous le sommes nous-mêmes. So mm. I would like to hear you on this. Bit. Au début, il faut que les leaders euh, prennent soin de d'eux-mêmes. Mm. Uh, you can't, you know, they say that in an airplane, yeah. right? You have to put on your own air mask before you try and help somebody else. En tant que leaders, nous devons penser sur notre résilience, notre mm. capacité de mener dans les temps de crise, parce qu'ils vont arriver. Aucune doute, ça va arriver. Um, I guess after that, I would say, uh, in some ways, quand j'étais ici, dans les autres ministères, quand les crises arrivent, les gens, um, they rise to the challenge. Mm. And in some ways, that's the best of public service because, wow, look, nous avons fait ça. Nous avons réussi avec ça. Nous avons réglé ce problème. Nous avons livré les marchandises pour quelqu'un ou une communauté. Because you can see, in a way, the results of your work more clearly. Yeah, the um, purpose is clear. Yeah, the purpose is clear. Maybe it's yeah. harder sometimes in, you know, kind of the day-to-day -day to be able to yeah. do that. But in a crisis, mais je, suis, je pense aussi la dernière um, idée, c'est vraiment le, le, de prendre le temps pour reconnaître mm. les gens, pour les, les, les choses qui peuvent être uh, acceptées, dites mm. merci, aller pour un pizza lunch. Uh, les primes de, de les prix de les prix de reconnaissance, you know, those events are uh, people kind of go, oh yeah, that's all corny and so on. It really means you go to people's offices, yeah. you see the certificate on the wall, or the little trophy with the you know, the little cup on it. So taking the time to say thank you to people and recognizing extraordinary effort, you know, one of the things about crisis is we do sometimes come out of our regular jobs and it's kind of all hands on deck and a team based effort. Alors prendre le temps pour reconnaître tous les membres d'équipe pour le travail qu'ils ont fait, la façon qu'ils ont utilisé pour le faire, mm. pour, pour atteindre un objectif. I think that, you know, that's a, that's a pay it forward because you got a huge return on investment from that for your people. When you were appointed DMs, there was not a lot of women. Uh, the diversity was lower than it was today. Yeah. Uh, was maybe, what, 20% women, I would say, at the time? I don't remember, actually, but you may be right. Probably around that, mm. I would think. Uh, on a fait des progrès, mais il y en a encore mm. à faire, c'est certain. J'aimerais ça t'entendre sur ces... Qu'est-ce qu'on doit faire pour, justement, s'assurer qu'on adresse les inégalités uh, sur le plan des, des genres, mais aussi, évidemment, des, des groupes divers? Pour moi, c'est une question de la meilleure utilisation de nos talents dans mm. nos organisations. Vous savez, Monsieur le sous-ministre de ce ministère, que nous avons une pénurie de main d'œuvre Et la fonction publique n'est pas différente que les emplo autres employeurs. Nous devons uh, battre contre les autres, autres organisations pour, pour attirer et retenir le, le mieux talent. So, in a world where talent is everything, we're not an organization, we're an organization of people, the public service. How do you make sure that you're getting the very best out of your talent? Right, and we've made huge progress. You you, you spoke about uh, about representation of women. We've made huge progress in Canada, in the federal public service in terms of the representation of women at all levels, including the most senior level. You know, we've had two women clerks. Yep. Um, so uh, Canada is actually recognized on a global basis for having done the most in terms of female representation in the senior ranks of their executive service. So. Um, we've done something right about that. So now we have other areas. We know that uh, when it comes to uh, black and other racialized employees, indigenous employees, employees with, uh, in, uh, with handicaps, yeah. uh, disabilities, excuse me, we have areas where at both at the levels below executive, but certainly at the executive level, we have a long way to go. We have a long way to go to try and kind of close the representation gaps, mm. which is about making sure that, you know, we reflect the diversity of the country we serve, uh, but also going beyond numbers. For me, it's a question of making sure that we are really reaping the benefit of that diversity in how we develop policies and the advice that we give and design programs and deliver services. Changer la culture. Changer la culture, changer la façon de penser et la façon mm. d'opérer en mm. même temps. Mais il y, a, il y a des raisons pour lesquelles nous n'avons pas fait de progrès. 
Mm. Um, there's lots of lots of areas where uh, we have more work to do. In 2021, um, our friend Ian Shugart launched the call to action uh, to counter um, anti-black racism, harassment, and discrimination. Our friend Gina Wilson has done some amazing yeah. work leading many voices. Uh, one mind work around inclusion for indigenous employees. And uh, Tina Nemiowski here is now mm. our champion for our employees with disabilities. So we have so we have great work that's been done that have kind of set the course for how we have strategies to be able to improve this. But there are still systemic barriers. There are still examples of, of employees who are being held back, qui n'ont pas la sens d'être vraiment vraiment bienvenus dans les organisations. Ils ont des problèmes de, uh, de se présenter dans un concours su uh, with success, un pas d'accès aux, aux, uh, aux occasions d'opportunités pour développement, de formation, accès aux uh, formations uh, en la deuxième langue. C'est vraiment un problème pour quelques de ces groupes. So I think we've got we've to do better. So mm -hmm. we've launched the call to action. We've launched the Many Voices, One Mind, and launched our accessibility strategy. But, um, and a lot of departments have made so much progress. You know, our employee networks in these organizations are doing fantastic work. But I think we've gotten to a point where best efforts are not good enough. They're not good enough for Canadians in terms of the work we do, and they're not good enough for our employees. Yeah. And so that's why I have called on deputy ministers to move to the next step, and that is well, let's set targets, let's measure outcomes, and let's actually hold ourselves accountable for this because that's what we do when it comes to government priorities. Let's do it for a public service priority. And so that's the, that's the next step. Just better que... Uh, les efforts uh, sur ce côté vont générer beaucoup de résultats, encore une fois pour les Canadiens, aussi pour nos employés. Jenny, j'aimerais maintenant parler un peu de la question du, euh, de la redéfinition du milieu de travail. Mm. Euh, avec, euh, évidemment, la COVID, on a vu beaucoup de changements. On s'est retrouvé, tout le monde travaille à partir de la maison. Ensuite, on a le modèle hybride. Là, on est, on est vraiment dans le modèle hybride. Quand tu regardes ça, euh, j'aimerais savoir un peu ton opinion sur... Comment tu vois ça aller au cours des 5, 10 prochaines années? Where do you see the public service going uh, with this? And you're going to have to enjoy looking at from outside. <laughs> so I would like to get your views before you leave on this one. You know me, Jean-François, I'll be watching. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, let's just look back for one second before we look forward. And that, you know, in those days, in the early days of the pandemic, quand les fonctionnaires étaient vraiment comme les autres Canadiens, euh, dans une situation qu'ils ils ne, ne savaient pas vraiment ce qui se passe avec la pandémie. Right. People went home, but they kept the business going. It was remarkable. That transition from pretty much default in the workplace every day to pretty much everybody working remote, although some of our employees had to come in every day, even yep. during the pandemic. C'était un miracle, franchement. Yeah, we would not have bet on this no. being possible. Nous so avons travaillé sur toi. beaucoup ouais. de initiatives de renouvellement. Ouais. If somebody had told us, okay, in the period of about two weeks, we are going to send everybody home, they're going to work from home, we'll get all the systems to adjust and all the processes to adjust and electronic signatures. We've been working on that for, I don't know, half my adult life. But Shazam! It's all going to happen. It's remarkable. Yeah. And the business kept going. And not just regular business, the gestion de crise. So, boy, we, so we know how to do fully remote. We've, said, we've shown that. And we know how to do fully in person in the office. Now, notre défi, c'est vraiment de perfectionner le modèle des bread. And so, what an amazing opportunity I think we have here. Because... I think we have the best of both worlds for our employees here. We know that um, there are times when, you know, concentration or in-depth work or reflection, sometimes it's better to be out of a, a, a busy, sometimes noisy workplace to do some of those things. Um, and it gives us a bit more flexibility in terms of home life as well. But we also know, I think the two of us, that public service is a team sport. Yep. It's a question de faire un job tout seul dans un bureau. C'est vraiment le, le travail en équipe pour uh, atteindre nos objectifs partagés. So the chance to be in an office with purpose, 
I don't, the idea of coming into the office and sitting in a cubicle and looking at MS Teams all day, c'est un gaspillage de temps pour nos employés. So we have to think about how do we how do we make the time in the office purposeful? It's about collaboration. It's about cooperation. It's about team building, and so I think we're in the progress in the process of doing that. Um, and this is a journey. We're in a journey of discovery now about what how to make hybrid work. But let, we have to make hybrid work. It's not about us. Mm-hmm. C'est about notre mandat, notre but en tant que la fonction publique. C'est comment est-ce que peut utiliser un, un nouveau modèle d'opération pour livrer pour les Canadiens. And so I think we're in in the program in the process of doing that. I am I am really impressed with how public servants, some of them probably not thrilled with the change, but I think the public the public service as a whole is adjusting to this. Yeah. Managers and supervisors have done a fantastic job, a lot of load on them to help their employees through this transition. And we're, you know, we're we we're not totally adjusted yet. We still have workplaces and technology that is struggling to keep up with the hybrid. You know, nous devons continuer à peaufiner nos mod- notre modèle. Um, but you know, in addition to the public service and the work of public service being a team sport, it's also about making sure that I go back to my our conversation about talent. Yeah. You know, how can we make sure that all of our employees have equitable access to opportunities that that opportunities for promotion and for development and to learn the culture of organization les petits trucs oui. qui sont uh, tellement important pour pour fonctionner dans une organisation d'apprendre la culture d'organisation nous avons travaillé dans plusieurs oui. uh, nous deux c'est différent un à l'autre n'est-ce pas ben nous on, on le voit dans les les DM weekly Uh, oui. On a vécu des, des, des DM Weekly où les gens sont dans la pièce. On en a vécu virtuel. Ce n'est pas la même chose du tout. Du tout. La plupart des DM Weekly qui étaient face à face dans, à l'époque étaient des rencontres avant la rencontre et après la rencontre. On, on arrive uh, avec une liste. Hein? On arrive avec notre liste et on <rire> va voir nos collègues. Et, oui. Alors que quand on est sur Teams, cet aspect-là disparaît, qui est, oui. un, qui est une valeur ajoutée qu'on perd. Donc ça... I, I would like to also hear you on, uh, you know, you talk about Ottawa, and I would say the Ottawa bubble, but we have a department, as you know, that is really strong in regions. Mm-hmm. And we like to say that we want to represent Canadian, which also means being where they are right. and where they live. I would like to hear you on how this model could become uh, also something helpful in the future for us to, be, to continue to be relevant for Canadians. Well, I think one of the things that we learned during the pandemic, as we switched from our more or less all in person to our remote, c'est la différence entre la région et le headquarters mm. était équilibrée. Right. Nous sommes, nous étions sur la même uh, plateforme en même temps. Il n'y a pas uh, trois, trois quarts, three right. quarters, de l'équipe dans une salle avec des gens sur l'écran. Yeah. Ce n'était pas équilibré. Alors, après, après uh, le, le, le shift to hybrid, we had really a recalibration between headquarters and regions. And I think also, you tell me if I'm wrong about this, given how I know this place a little bit, that also recalibrates a little bit between policy and operations. It does, it does. Oui, ce qui se passe dans les, dans les régions, ça doit a, avoir une influence sur le développement des politiques, mais ce n'est pas facile. It's not a natural thing, but but to have a feedback loop between what's happening on the ground that influences policy, then policy, then shifts, okay, and then we see how it actually works. Think about EI, think about the grants and contributions yeah. programs. Je pense que nous avons um, trouvé une nouvelle façon d'opérer. Right. So how do we maintain that as we shift to the hybrid? I think hopefully with, you know, the advances in technology that we have made in the last couple of years, we can keep some of that. You know, it isn't about getting on an airplane to be able to connect with your RDG in British Columbia yeah. or the person running the Service Canada office in Rimouski pour savoir ce qui se passe sur le terrain. Un risque pour la fonction publique, nous avons discuté ça dans le passé, Jean-François, c'est que la fonction publique, particulièrement les autres fonctionnaires dans la fonction publique, peut être isolée à Ottawa et ils perdent la connaissance de pays. So, what amazing assets we've developed now to be able to stay connected across the country. Let's, mm. let's 
not just not lose mm. that, il faut bâtir sur ça. Et, et tu as été greffière avant la pandémie. Mm -hmm. Tu es une des rares, sinon la seule à être greffière <rire> deux fois. Donc, tu as été greffière avant la pandémie. Tu es revenue après la pandémie. Est-ce que tu as vu aussi comme, li comme leader comme ça d'une organisation si vaste, est-ce que ça t'a ouvert des possibilités de parler aux gens plus directement aussi? Je sais que moi, ça a été une grosse différence de pouvoir faire des town halls with everybody who are thousands of people on, on, on the screen who can suddenly hear you and exchange with you. Uh, it's actually kind of amazing. Um, J'étais graphière avant la pandémie, pendant la pandémie, après la pandémie. C'est vrai, pendant, j'oubliais. Oui, trois ouais. périodes, festival. Um, <laughs> festival, peut-être. Um, I remember being at, I was the Deputy Minister of Immigration and Climate Change, uh, and Climate Change, Immigration, Citizenship, and, and Refugees. Am I allowed to talk about another department? Is that okay? It's okay. It's like double dating or something. It's okay. Um, we will it's like a sister you. department to this yeah. one in some ways. Yeah. Um, and We've I remember... You've got temporary fine workers and, and <laughs> passports in common. <laughs> exactly, amongst other things. Uh, I remember wanting to have a town hall with my employees. It was a gargantuan undertaking to try to pull off. And you had people abroad, too. Yeah. yeah. And we didn't, we didn't even try to okay. do that. That was like <laughs> impossible, impossible. It was extraordinary to try to pull off. Mm. And now you can have an MS Teams call. Hundreds of people can join. I remember speaking to ADMs across the public service, executives across the public service. I've done... I've done town halls with PCO, I've done town halls with departments. You have a reach that you didn't have before, but, but, je me souviens aussi, comme vous probablement, dans plusieurs um, Teams calls et les uh, interactions virtuelles, plusieurs gens ont fermé leur caméra. Hmm. Il y a quelques-unes qui sont vraiment impliquées dans la discussion, mais les autres qui sont qui étaient observers. We risk some exclusion there too. Yeah. So um, how do you really make people feel included in a virtual setting and feel like they're all kind of, as I said welcome. earlier, welcome, uh, pour, être pour être participant, right. pas seulement les observeurs, d'une discussion, c'est important. But wow, I mean, we've talked about the death of distance for a mm. long time. Things like teams. Had you ever heard of... Um, some of these platforms before the pandemic? I'd never no. heard of them. Eh? Oh, a Zoom, some of them. Zoom. A Zoom call. Zoom, yeah. I'd never heard of a I Zoom call. Zoom. Oh, yeah. no way. Janice, <laughs> before we conclude, uh, I would, you know, it's, it's especially now that, that you're retiring. J'aimerais ça t'entendre sur des... On a, écoute, tu as plein de fonctionnaires qui vont t'écouter de tout âge. J'espère. En particulier, oui, il y en a beaucoup. On t'enverra les chiffres. Et... Qu'est-ce que tu donnes comme avis de carrière à des gens qui commencent dans la fonction publique ou qui sont au sein de la fonction publique? C'est quoi tes avis en termes de comment gérer une carrière dans la fonction publique? OK. Euh, Peut-être trois points, si je peux. D'abord, être ouverte, ou soyez ouverte de n'importe ouais. quelle opportunité qui peut arriver. I mean, I started in the Department of Finance in 1984 and I became the clerk. I thought yeah. I was going to be a corporate finance whiz. I ended up working on health policy, immigration policy, labor market policy, design and delivery of programs. Je n'avais jamais un plan. Hmm. Maybe that's not a very good piece of advice, but no, I, I, advice. I found opportunities and I was open to them along the way um, and uh, worked hard in those and they created more opportunities. So don't be so fixated necessarily. The public service is an amazing place to work. Vous pouvez uh, vous joindre à la fonction publique, avoir une centaine de carrières. Mm. Uh, so be open to possibilities. The second thing I would say is do what you love. Because... And when, love what you do. And, well, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think it's a lot easier when you it's do a, what you it's love. A of, yeah. It's a, it's a yeah. lot easier. And then, you know, there, because there are so many opportunities, um, there are uh, so many different things you can do in the public service. Um, when you do things that you really care about, uh, I think it makes a difference in terms of your own personal motivation. Mm -hmm. I think it has an impact in terms of how successful you are at it as well. Um, and the third piece of advice uh, is 
be picky about the people that you work with and recognize that you are part of a broader ecosystem. Mm. Nous travaillons en équipe. Il faut être présent et uh, not just present. You have to be there as, and show up as a member of the team. Yeah. Put in the effort. Uh, be part of the culture of the organization, celebrate the victories with your colleagues, go through and be there when the tough times are there. Because I think working in that kind of a supportive environment will make all the difference in the world for you as a public servant. Um, and, uh, you know, I look back now as I'm doing a lot of reflecting about uh, what I've done since 1984. It it's not about the files, it's about the people along the way that I had a mm. chance to work with at all levels. And so, you know, be there for people, think about people, take care of people. Um, and uh, I think you will have an amazing career in the public service. I, I know I sure have. Yeah, you, you had a fantastic career. That's that's for sure. The um, Look, I won't, uh, I won't turn to you for questions. I will just, I think I will conclude because we're, we're out of time. I want to say, Janice, thanks for your generosity. Thanks for coming here. Oh, my pleasure. You are truly the best public servant I've <laughs> ever worked with in my career. Don't say that. Yeah, and I really believe that. Um, I think your advice are fantastic. Oh, thank you. And I can attest that one thing that you did, you know, I, I mentioned the first time we met. And the first time we met, I was a little fish. You were already a big fish. I was an analyst, <laughs> and you were an assistant secretary. I didn't speak English at the time. Yeah. Je ne me souviens pas. Oh, yeah. And so I knew I had five seconds to speak, <laughs> but you did turn to me. You always, always turn to everybody in the room, hmm. and uh, including cleaning people, like the staff, the drivers, everybody. Oh, yeah. You never made any distinction in terms of hierarchy. And for me, that's truly something that speaks uh, about... Uh, the kind of heart that you bring every day at the table. So I want on, on my behalf and on behalf of... You made me of cry, the, I, know, well. I know, I know. Sorry. And I will too, normally I'm the Céline Dion. But uh, <laughs> je tiens vraiment à te remercier parce que tu as eu une carrière fantastique, tu as eu une influence majeure sur beaucoup d'entre nous. And, uh, and I'm really pleased that uh, you came and joined us and talked to uh, ESDC people uh, before leaving, but not being too far away. Jamais. I'll yes, be watching. Thank you, You'll be watching. And <laughs> good luck. Good luck to you and to all of my uh, friends and colleagues at ESTC. The work you do is so important. You're building a better Canada every day. Thank you. Merci, Merci Janice. Janice.